I've, I've got... Right, well, Nick's back in his chair. So I think we are ready to go on episode 22. So it's been a, we're a little slightly longer than we, we were going to plan in. But uh, anyway, we're here. It's uh, it's horrible evening in October. I think what is it? It's the October the 18th and today when we're recording this. Yeah. So it's pretty grotty. Uh, but we've got to episode 22. And as you kind of picked up last time, we did a little bit of a kind of summer. Still still doing our summer catch-up, although summer, summer does feel a long, long time ago. So if you remember last time we got together, Bruce gave us a very interesting little soiree around the Isle of Wight and the southern ports and calling back into London. So we did say at that point, I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about Jersey. So it's, it's going to be me a bit tonight because these two haven't been to Jersey. So um, I can tell him anything, they'll believe me. So I went, we... I went 20 years ago. Oh, did you? I mean, oh, right. They, I wish that right. we got, you know, there's a teletext holiday. Um, <laughs> it was a week when I left Malta, moved to York, for a week's holiday. And uh, in those days, you got the TV, didn't you? Yeah, so teletext, we, yeah. We got a week in Jersey for a £129 out of Leeds Bradford Airport. Yeah. Remember that place? It was a two star hotel called the Talana Hotel on the Bagger Road. It's, like <laughs> it's still there because I looked through the day. Yeah, yeah. It was, that, it was like going back in time. You were, it was full of Scotch people. I've gone to Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> drinking and smoking. But never left the hotel. <laughs> and at breakfast time, you, you had to sit with the same people every morning, and they brought a menu. And there was all these different combinations. There was like bacon, egg, sausage, tomato, fried egg, poached egg, and toast. But in there was like endless combinations. But in no combination could you have bacon and sausage together. <laughs> <laughs> Penny pinching place. But, but oh, oh, I've got to say the uh, the breakfast in the Royal Yacht Club was uh, very nice. Yeah, our, our host. <laughs> Our holiday was a slightly more than that. Um, <laughs> but uh, again, it was one of those things we were just looking for somewhere to get away, really. So we went right at the end of July, early August. Um, and then, and again, Jersey was still a little bit locked down at the time. We'd come out of lockdown and I was watching that bloody football game at Wembley, wasn't it? Remember that? That was yeah. just before we went, actually. And uh, they... So that's the plan tonight. We're gonna, I'm going to have a little tour on the island. Um, it's not a very big island, so it won't take too long. Um, and there is there is uh, a range of pubs, although I think probably the better ones are limited probably to one hand. So I'm going to pick some of those up and talk a little bit about Liberation Brewing, which tends to dominate the island, and we'll come back to that as well. But we'll have our u- usual beery catch-up. So it's, it's been a couple of weeks since we, uh, we we last spoke, and certainly I've not seen these guys in the flesh for a few weeks. I'm hoping to catch up with Nicholas this week, um, off to Welsh Wales next week. So I'm off to pick up the... Uh, the old folk. So, Nicholas, I hope we're going to get maybe sneak one in the new Malton, possibly on on Wednesday night. Hopefully, all right. That's the plan. Uh, are you drinking tonight, Nicholas? Has it been a weekday? Uh, well, I am, yeah, because I've just oh. done my seven days, so I've not been drinking during the week. Other than we went to the new Malton last night, and there's three nice ones on there. But I managed to get a can of uh, the old, all oh, right, Camden Marmite. All oh. oh, right. Oh. So I'm going to give that a try now. <laughs> right. What does it say on it? Love it or hate it, my my tail. See, so, Bruce would have paid sixteen pound for a pint of that in, in Camden the, the other week when he was there. Uh, two two quid in Morrison's. Oh, well, that's not too bad actually. Yeah, two pound in Morrison's. So let, let's have a look at the colour of it. Oh, it's lighter than I expected. Yeah, I've got my Camden glass here as well. Can you get a smell yet? There's only smell on it yet, my mighty. Um, smells like home brew. <laughs> 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 yeah, if it, if it if it tastes like it smells, it's like that stuff that I made about six seven years ago, just before uh, Christmas. Um, uh, anyway, that's that's the uh, sort of uh, very good. Color. It is actually a little bit darker than you'd expect. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, uh, we've uh, we've mentioned Marmite. I mean, they have a fantastic bloody marketing team, don't they? Because they're everywhere at the moment, and yeah. obviously they're still there in uh, Burton. Did we say there's a Marmite museum in Burton? I think we did, didn't we? I've saw. I think I was going to try and follow that up and chase that up, but. Uh, What's it taste like, Nick? It's um, if you give it to me and said nothing about a marmite, I won't. Oh you won't yeah, it's yeah. That, after taste. like the Yorkshire pudding beer. Yeah, it's very, it's it's smoky, it's roasty, so it's a bit like a, a smoky porter. But then you get a slight little aftertaste of marmite, a bit like you say we said about the Yorkshire pudding beer. But if 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 you give that to me and I didn't know what it was. 
I wouldn't have gone, oh, that tastes like right. Marmite. I mean, I don't mind Marmite, as you know. Yeah, no, I like Marmite. I quite yeah. like Marmite. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, different, but okay. I've had it in the, uh, in the, in the beer cooler as well. So maybe... I don't know whether it suits being so cold or not, really. Maybe it warms uh, up a little bit. It might this is at about three degrees will be this. Yeah, like, my beer fridge is at about three degrees, which is probably a little bit too cold yeah, for, yeah. Uh, for real ale. But, yeah, uh, my can's pretty cold as well. I've got. Bruce, have you, are you partaking this evening, Bruce? <laughs> a bottle of uh, Cropton Brewery's latest incarnation. Uh, ah. C84, the branded now. What the hell's right. that about? C84, bro. Yeah, yeah. Cropped yeah. in 1984 when the yeah. brewery was uh, first made. But like I said... You know, like history and heritage for that is bizarre. Yeah. But it's very nice, I have to say. It's really good. But we are, we've, said before, we've said before, we've said before they got a bit of trouble, didn't they, with the White Rose and Mr Smith again. Our good old friend Humphrey got involved, didn't he, some time ago legally. So I know they had to do a bit of a rebrand. I think we talked about that back in one of the early episodes. Well, they, they, they didn't as such. They just basically copped a snook, snook at him by... Yeah. From from Cropton, it was when they were doing the Yorkshire Warrior beer for the Yorkshire Regiment, put the White Rose on there. Mm. So when when uh, the, the High Court ruled that, yes, the White Rose was a brand mark of his, they basically then went for everything Yorkshire. They went for whippets, crooked bats, flat caps, pigeons, and called themselves a great Yorkshire brewery. Mm. Uh, but then, as I say, now they've, they've rebranded themselves again as the C84 brewery. But I think the great Yorkshire brewery and the Cropton brewery brand names are still going as well. So Right. Well, I've had my Thornbridge uh, monthly club beer, so this evening I am on one I've not had before, actually. This is called uh, Val Ravine, Ooh. which is a uh, Imperial Black IPA, although it is 8.8, .8, so I'm just having the one tonight, I think. So I will, uh, I'll crack this one and see what this looks like. Uh, again, they look really good. There's a couple of nice beers, actually. I've, I've put the slide a bit later on. So actually, this doesn't, doesn't look that different to... Uh, to Nick's brew, actually, in terms of it being, I mean, my camera's going a bit there. It's quite, uh, yeah, it's quite dark. Looks like you're in a ghost pub there. Yeah. It's a bit, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, a bit like almost get a hint of coke as you uh, as you sip it and have the drink of it. I mean, oh, it's quite nice that. Mm, quite malty and it doesn't really taste like eight percent. Bit of licorice, very nice. Right, anyway, let's crack on. Let's crack on. Come on, we've got a podcast to go. So, B News, Bruce, these are all yours this week. Because mm. I say, I think I, I know Nick's been working flat out, and I've been fairly flat out. So, you'd picked a couple up, uh, and a couple, certainly one pub that we have mentioned uh, previously. So, the whole Daily Mail ran a story, I think last week you said this, isn't it? Um, about the coziest pubs in the UK, and actually quite a few in uh, Yorkshire managed to get there. And I think either the top one was it, or certainly towards the top was Nelly's, uh, the White Horse in Beverly, which I think that was your, wasn't that your pub of the pub, pub of the world, wasn't it? When you did our yeah, moon underwater. It is fantastic. Uh, yeah. uh, it's small individual rooms, rickety stone and wooden floors, open fires and tobacco stained walls. They actually painted that colour. All had character to place. So yeah, the White Horse Nelly's. Uh, was was came out, I think, the top of the most coziest pubs in the UK. Hmm, I'm not quite sure if it's cozy. It's certainly <laughs> atmospheric. <laughs> I'm not sure about cozy. Uh, well, was it allowed to take any pictures inside to show people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then just to go through the other ones which were listed, actually, were White Locks in Leeds. I think we we, we mentioned White Locks. Uh, the Royal George in Stade, which, again, I have been to many moons ago. I've not been there for years. It's well, it looked great though. Look great. Yeah, that's not the one right on the quayside. It's a bit further up, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Is it up the main street. Up on the quayside, yeah. Uh, the Blue Line East Witted. I think Nick, I've been in there. I think you may have been in there a few times. Mm. It's on that funny corner. The Craven Arms in Apple Tree Week. That always gets quite a few write ups. The Star Inn and High Rome, which is not really a pub, is it? It's a very I wouldn't. I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't call that a cozy pub. Uh, no way. In fact, I doubt you. I doubt you could actually go in there and sit down and have a drink, yeah. could you? Well, he, uh, he reckons you can. And then the last one was the Harrogate mm. Tap, which I was interested in. Which, you know, oh, I mean, thought, yeah. Harrogate Tap's great, but it's not cosy, is it? I suppose if you yeah. get in that little snug room as you mm. kind of go in, maybe. So that was that one. And then, Bruce, uh, you also shared us a post from the Yorkshire Post. Mm. And again, another kind of one of those common stories, really, we, when we talked about Harrogate. Just outside Harrogate is a place called Kirby Malziad. Is that what you say? Near Ripon, Harrogate. And the pub there is the, uh, the Henry Jenkins. And there's a big battle going on. I think um, I don't know. Was this right that the the, the locals want it to be a community asset, don't they? But yeah. I think that's been the the council have ignored them, and yeah. it's going to be flogged off for apartments, isn't it? By all accounts, great shame that, isn't it? The villagers just die when the pub dies, don't they? 
And that looks quite a big, a big place as well, doesn't that pub? Yeah. There, it's. Uh, I was trying to work out what the signage is on the thing, but you can't really see on the. Yeah. Uh, I wonder whether it's is that black sheet perhaps on. I don't know. I have not have a funny feeling it might have been Vox signage. Uh, yeah. Wrong, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, and then in terms of beery highlights, well, I mentioned last time that last Saturday was the Titanic Brewery. So the weather wasn't quite as good as it's been in previous years, but uh, uh, brother-in-law and I went, and uh, this is for the first-class members. So, again, it's all those membership schemes. Uh, you get, uh, I think it's about 40 quid a year. You get a pound of pint every week. Uh, you get discount on the sales. And then I say once a year, they throw open the brewery. And they feed and they um, water you all day long. So we ended up having about eight or nine pints, which is quite nice. Um, and pretty much every one of their beers was on was on offer. Although I've got to say, I do quite like, um, they had a couple on keg, which were quite nice, really. Um, and again, we had, a, we had a good range of beers there. But unfortunately, uh, Keith, Keith Bott, who's kind of one of, the, one of the owners, had just got COVID the day before. So mm. we didn't quite get a real big update. One of the one of the guy on the steps there, for those on YouTube, he's one of the directors. But he just basically said that, uh, you know, unfortunately, Keith didn't be there. So um, he normally gives us a really good update about where the brewery is and how they're doing. So missed that a little bit. Um, and then I mentioned the... Um, the Thornbridge Beer Club, it's, it's their month. So, again, there's quite a few nice ones. They're all getting a bit dark, though. I think you can tell the lights, the kind of nights are drawing in. Um, so, some brown ales here. And I haven't yet tried, which they say is the Halloween theme, the Blood Orange um, Halcyon, which is a 7.4% West Coast IPA infused with a blood orange. I'm, not, I've kept, I'm keeping that one back. Um, um, I've tried the Condor, with, that's with Squawk Brew, that's quite nice. So I'll let you know how those go as well. So, uh, Nick, have you been out and about? I know you've been working, so no one's drinking. Yeah, then. so I knew him last night and talking about darker beers. My, my favourite out the paddle last night, because um, Gemma had three on. She had two Pennine Brewery on. Um, let me remember what they were. One was a Heartland uh, Dark Amber. And then they also had a Millie George, which uh, on the pub clear said it was a blonde with attitude, actually. Looked into it. Millie George is the daughter of the uh, the people who own the brewery. And out of the three, oh, they had a great use from Frothing and Best on as well, which, as you know, is one of my mm. staple favourites. But out of the three, I actually enjoyed the uh, the Millie George the best. Yeah. Uh, a little bit colder. I say it was it was a light blonde beer. Uh, quite a nice flavour to it. So yeah, I was quite surprised that out of the three, I chose that one. Um, beer I liked went to Asda today. Ten cans of Guinness for ten quid. Didn't <laughs> think that was too bad, is it? Oh, pound a can, bad. yeah. You know, big cans, big cans, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're just, we're just saying we, we've neither of us have tried the Guinness Zero yet, which obviously I think we mentioned last time we were together, yeah. So, see I the think, adverts, not seen it, not not seen it on sale yet. I think you've got oh, the four advert. pack as well, don't you? Well, the adverts make it look pretty good, actually. Oh, they had uh, four cans of bitter in Azra as well for 90 pence. Oh, god, it's, it's uh, <laughs> and it, it, it just says on it, brooding Great Britain. Uh, but when I look closer, it's two percent ABV. So yeah. what's that? Ninety pence divided by four. Uh, twenty. Do what? Twenty-two and a half pence. Twenty-two and a half pence a can. Yeah. I mean, you can't you can't get bottled water for that, can you? Yeah. So uh, yeah, Bonkers. so I don't know what it's like. I might I might buy you a pack for Christmas. You know, <laughs> a, a special it. treat. Ninety yeah, pence. All right, yeah. yeah. Do you know what? I bet it'd be all right. It's two percent, so it's nice little quaffable, you know, beer. If you're going out somewhere, you can probably what drink three or four of those, couldn't you, compared to having a, <laughs> a, well, an eight point eight percent um in black imperial IPA. Um, yeah. Bruce, have you been out and about in York uh, environs? Chris, um after we, it was two weeks ago last Thursday, we went out with uh, Nick and your mum and dad and uh, Chris has been poorly, uh, so it's kept us in a bit, really. So uh, last time I was in a pub was a week last Saturday. We, we went for a couple of pints before I went to see James Bond. Uh, All right. Nothing to report, but me and Nick, we think we're going to the Rhubarb Triangle this Saturday, don't we, Nick? Uh, Castleford, Wakefield. Harbour, Be looking right. at it today, Bruce. Wakefield looks a, a good a good off, offer, yeah, good option, mate. So, yeah, so, I'll have uh, a chat with you later on. Uh, once we we'll finish have loads the podcast. to report next time round. Yeah. That sounds like a, a podcast of future, then, so make sure yeah, you get yeah, on next one, yeah. There's yeah. at least three three breweries in Wakefield that I've spotted as well. Like, yeah, so, yeah. No, it's, uh... Although I don't think I don't think they've all got taps. Uh, Fernando's do, and then these are five towns, but I don't know that they've got a tap. They're just basically an old garage just outside of Wakefield. So anyway, we'll have a bit more research. But yeah, so, that's sounding like a good option, Bruce. Let's just backtrack a bit. So the last time you were on, you said you hadn't done much, kind of been out lots of pub drinking, but you'd been. Bruce was on a cracking deal, didn't you, with some restaurant in York that was doing. What was it? Steak and three bottles of beer for ten pounds. 
<laughs> and, and the day after, your wife Bruce is is struck down with gastroenteritis, <laughs> as, as was was uh, was Evie as well. Did I hear that? What, what, what well, Evie's not a bit rough. Like cold. She did. All oh, right. She lost. She lost. Uh, well, she's still pretty pretty deaf actually. Yeah. Uh, was yeah that anyway. was a good deal. That though. To say. <laughs> that sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So let's crack Roll on. Right so. on. Oh, hang on. One more item. Oh, go back. Did you see back. the Daily Express this week? Saturday oh, they announced. No, well, I don't. It just popped up on my phone. But uh, some research Young group Tory. had done uh, research into the best places for independent pubs and breweries. Uh, Newcastle came out on top, yeah. followed by Manchester. Uh, in terms of how many independent pubs there are in the town, how many independent breweries, and uh, how many unique beers, craft beers, as they call them. But on the back of that, there was a link to an article about the new, uh, the new brew, uh, brew dog uh, hotel in Manchester. Oh yeah, it's open. Do you now, know yeah. about it? Yeah, you get a beer in your bedroom. You can choose a keg of whatever beer 18, you want. 18, 18 rooms. So I don't know yeah. how much a room is a night, but for one hundred and fifty pound, you can upgrade, and they provide you with a fridge in the shower. Yeah, that has 10, 10 of their cans in. They give you a five litre mini keg of Thanks. any of their beer in the in the in the room in your bedroom. Um, that you can help yourself to. Uh, breakfast for two, uh, evening meal for two, and you get a flight of beers and a 60-minute uh, beer, beer school station. session as yeah. well. Uh, 150 quid. So I say, I don't know how much the rooms are, but uh, I'm thinking, though, that's about eight litres of beer that you've got in your room. I mean... <laughs> You won't be fit to go anywhere if you sit and <laughs> drink that. There's vomit all over the hotel, aren't there? <laughs> well, even, even over, over a couple of days. I mean, I would think if I was going for that deal, I'd want to book the room for like three or four days. But I suppose, unless you pay £150 extra a night, I don't know how it works really. Um, so, so yeah, I just picked up on that. Mm. Uh, well, and of course, as a, um, as a brew dog uh, equity punk, I think I get 20% discount on that hotel as well. So... I might have to treat you both to uh, to Christmas. Well, they actually, they actually say you're also with a £150 package. You then get 10% off in any of the brew pubs in Manchester. But yeah. I'm thinking, well, you won't be going out, would you, if you've paid 150 quid and got all that to sup? Yeah, that's annoying. That, so yeah. Including just, Elvis uh, Juice as well on the menu. Just look. Uh, £145 for a room one night, in, if you went in November. Right, so, so 295 put, quid then if you upgrade yeah. to... Uh, your, your, Which, your, well, you know, it's not... And they look quite nice rooms, actually, when you look at them on the thing. Anyway, yeah. Well, you won't be able to see the room, but you've just drunk eight, eight <laughs> litres of their bloody beer. Yeah. Christ, all you see is the ceiling <laughs> or the floor. Just, uh, or just the, pace or the yourself. toilet. Just pay yourself. Right, mm. let's go to Jersey. So, Jersey is a obviously an island in the channel, in the channels. Channels? It's the largest of the Channel Islands, uh, but it's not very big. It's I think it's nine miles by five miles. So you fly into St. Helier. Uh, we did look at the ferry, but the ferry is quite expensive compared to flights, actually. Uh, and as I said, we went just kind of when things were unlocking. So uh, there wasn't a great double accommodation. And, and it can get quite busy because it gets quite a, it's quite a popular place. Uh, I think what they said was a lot of the Jersey people were actually Jersey holidaying rather than going uh, across across abroad. So, But definitely worth it. It did feel like we were going abroad. Uh, obviously, we're going to play. We flew from East Midlands. Um, I think I only mentioned, actually, East Midlands Airport was only just unlocking. So uh, a lot of the bars, there was only one bar open, one up, big one upstairs. So I think I managed, managed to pack a Guinness, but that was about it. Because there is quite a nice bar, new bar, actually, in East Midlands Airport, like a crafty bar, which is which is very, very nice. So we went there for a week. Um, so we stayed in the Royal Yacht, which is back in the middle of St. Helier, just off Liberation Square, um, overlooking kind of the harbour. So it was great, really, because there's loads of really good pubs. In fact, there's a fantastic pub, literally, in, in the, uh, not, not quite the basement, but right next door to the hotel. But actually, there's another one that I didn't really go to the last day. I had a great, great afternoon, sat in the sun, uh, in the Troubadour, which I'll talk about uh, uh, quite uh, in a minute. So uh, it's the, the island's got quite a long history of brewing. And obviously, Nick, uh, again, it's, it was the first. Was it the only bit of UK that was um, invaded by the Germans in the Second World War, wasn't it? I think it's claimed, well, not claimed to fame, but... Um, oh, the Chan Chan Islands, yeah, yeah. And I think they had it quite rough, actually. You know, by all counts of it, they were, you know, they weren't treated particularly well, and um, it nearly led to starvation towards the end of the war, when obviously things were going. I think the Germans just kind of forgot about Jersey and left both the the, the troops who were there and also the, uh, the obviously the islanders. Um, so it the not surprisingly, the island is dominated in beer scene by Liberation Brewing, 
uh, named after, of course, the liberation of Jersey by the Allied forces. Um, they were, have, I don't know, probably even 20 odd years, I think, in, uh, in terms of working, but they've slightly lost their independence because a couple of years ago they, they were bought out by Butcombe Brewery. Um, again, people who drink in the southwest will be well aware of Butcombe. They're based in uh, uh, Bristol. And obviously, be down in the south, that South Somerset, uh, North Devon, you, their beers are, are fairly, um, you know, a bit a, a, a big jutus, whatever the word is. Uh, they have about forty pubs, I think. Uh, a couple I've been in would have been really nice. I can't, I'd not mind actually their beer. And of course, famously now they do um, Adam Henson, the country file farmer. Uh, they they've done a partnership with him, and he, they have his. Um, I think it's called Rare Breed. Rare Breed, yeah. yeah. Which is supposed, supposed to be quite, I've not actually had that one, but it's supposed to be quite good. So Liberation, um, they do quite a range of beers. Uh, my particular choice uh, while I was there was Herm Gold, which is uh, one you can see there's a blonde beer, 4.2%, but that was a guess because it was kind of summery. Um, and uh, yeah, so there we go. Uh, so yeah, Bookcom, they've been around for about 40 odd years now. Um, and I, I think have moved now to a bit more crafty. Quite a similar offer, really. They do an original bitter, which has been around for a while, and they do a very nice book from Gold, Golden Ale. I mentioned the rare breed there, which is a pale ale. Uh, there are a couple of other breweries in Jersey, but a bit like when Bruce said about the Alibi, it, it was really hard to find their beers, actually. So there is the Bliss Brew Co. Um, I think I managed to get a couple bottles um, there. And then there's also a brewery called the Stinky Bay, which is something to do with the, the kind of where it is on, on a particular bay that doesn't smell very nice. But again, it was quite hard to find their beers. Um, there's no supermarkets on Jersey. There's no big supermarket chains. So I think um, there's a firm called Alliance, which a bit like have Tesco badged. And there's another one that had Morrison's products, but there's no actually say there's no Sainsbury's or Morrison's. Um, they have co-ops. Um, and they, they did have a range of some beers. So um, it was... Uh, yeah, so, but basically you just got the liberation and, and there's, I say, that's my favourite tipple, which was a home goal on our balcony there, but the weather wasn't so great that day. So, uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, Jersey is fairly compact. You can get around it fairly quickly. It probably takes about... So they've hours. got a Carrefour there? Uh, uh, it might be Carrefour, but I think it might be, late. again, it's a, like a mini Carrefour. Oh, no, you... Ticket <laughs> uh, that's the crossroads. Uh, in fact, there's a good pub there called Saint, the Saint Mary, uh, Saint Mary's Inn. At the Carrefour. Uh, so <laughs> it's obviously lots of beaches. Um, St. Helia is the kind of main kind of central bit. And virtually everything I can see on that map there, pretty much everything goes into St. Helia. Uh, we had some really nice meals. We went to a couple of quite posh restaurants. We kind of, having been locked down, we pushed the boat out a bit. So we went to um, a couple of kind of Michelin star restaurants. Uh, one that's in between St. Helia and St. Auburn. And then one actually in St. Auburn, which, which, which was really nice, actually. Um, and we had a very nice afternoon tea as well. Um, so uh, it was, was, it, is it, was it or is it a very religious place? Because I mean, all those towns are called Saint, aren't they? No, go back to that map. I think it's just there, there's the parishes, so right. they're, they're, they're the original parishes Saint Peter's, Saint yeah. Redley, Saint Aubin, Saint Lawrence, Saint uh, Elia, Saint Owen, Saint Mary, Saint John, Saint and, Martin. And so it's interesting because when you go into each of those villages, that's why there's they, not many pubs, they don't have a town hall, but there'll be a parish hall, a Saint Peter's parish hall, and that normally has a bit of a bar attached to it. And there's normally a sports field. And interestingly, each of those parishes has their own police force. So there is a Jersey police force, but then each parish has its own constables. And in, in that parish, they have the power of arrest um, and they can kind of sort you out. So it's quite, you know, it, it is, it is, it, you are stepping back, uh, I won't say several centuries, but it certainly feels a little bit like a bit like Isle of Wight. I think you mentioned, Bruce, you, you are turning the clock back slightly. And the, yeah. the more inland you go, then the more that feels like that as well, really. So, and they're quite, they, those parishes are quite parochial. So they all have a flag, a big, all the, each is a football team and they're quite, quite uh, proud of their, their parish. So I think it's your parish first, then Jersey, uh, and then you're from the United Kingdom. Which is, soccer team's gone into the football pyramid, hasn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. And uh, in fact, they were in the FA Cup, I think, when we were there. They were just in the FA Cup when we were there. And obviously the rugby team, again, they're doing quite well. They're quite playing quite high up as now. And, we were just there, actually with the British Lions had just finished training. With that, they flew out the day we flew in, um, and you went past. In fact, you drive past the rugby ground on your way into St. Elia, and it was all Lions, all of the Lions stuff. And of course, they flew back there as well, and quarantined after their trip to South Africa. So it was an interesting time to go to uh, Jersey because not only was it still in lockdown, but of course, the week before we went, there was there was all those French boats <laughs> blocking blocking the harbour. 
uh, and the and all the Daily Mail and the Daily Express send the gunboats to bomb, you know, blow the French out of the water. So it was there was a bit of tension, yeah, yeah. really. Yeah, and and again, although we had unlocked in the UK, actually in Jersey, it was still quite strict actually in that it was table service. Uh, you had to wear masks and things when you were moving around pubs. So um, it did feel, you know, I think they'd be very protective of the island. They haven't had huge COVID, but obviously tourism and finance and you know legal stuff is quite an important to industry to them. So it was quite restricted. Uh, we had to have a test when we landed. But again, Jersey being Jersey, they paid for that for free. So you, as you got off the plane, you went into the uh, terminal and there just must have been, I don't know, 50 um, kind of uh, hospital staff waiting for you. And it was all, all it was all done pretty well, actually. So, um, and that was it. Um, we were double jab, so we just had to, we were okay. We, we could go where we wanted and get our results back. Uh, just the son, because he hadn't been jabbed at that point, he just had to wait in the hotel until he got his results. So, I think we landed at four and he got his result by 11. He was fine. So uh, once once that was done, that was it. So it was interesting. So as I mentioned, uh, delightfully for us, let's go back one actually for those on YouTube. What you can see there is Liberation Square. So this is back in the middle of St. Helier. Um, and there's a big statue there of um, the raising the flag. If you look to the far right, this kind of uh, be below the big um, yachty thing on top of the uh, Fort Region, our hotel was there. That is the uh, Royal Yacht. Um, it was a, a kind of a smaller hotel. It's been quite expanded now. Um, so as you can see, it was, it was really nice, pretty central. Um, and just at the side of that was the Lamplighter. Yeah, and this great. is probably Jersey's number one really pub, real ale pub um, in the middle of St. Helier. Uh, again, got to thank, with the, there's a few Sean's we mentioned here because uh, Sean is the landlord of the Lamplighter and he's been there for many, many years. And uh, we mentioned that in Moulton, uh, the uh, old Moulton Royal Oak, uh, uh, Sean, the landlord there, is South African, Sean. But he did stay. Steve. Sorry, Steve. Sorry, Steve. Steve. Steve uh, and he spent a few years working in Jersey, and he kind of gave us a list of things, uh, pubs. And this is the one he said, you've got to go to this pub, and he goes to see Sean, uh, which we did. We caught up with Sean. Um, and Steve gave us a few of the little good tips as well, which which was really good. So, yeah, like you say, Bruce, fantastic pub. Um little kind of town boozer quite it's a bit deceptive it's quite long and thin actually and it goes on out the back and uh, maybe not quite when i was there the range of beers they normally have on i think they had three beers on when i was there um, and i think the the doom bar was unfortunately one of them uh, and and the liberation beers but when you looked at kind of their normal beer beer lift it was quite it was quite intensive um, I, I think I shared that one with you before, and that's the whiskey list for those on YouTube, oh. which is just massive. So they also do uh, loads of whiskeys as well. And if you look at that, if you, I, I did read about this. I think this used to be um, uh, something that maybe to do with kind of, kind of a customs house. So uh, for those on YouTube, if you look above the kind of the street mm. level. Britannia there. Yeah, yeah, really ornate. Fantastic yeah. kind of setup, really. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. So a great pub, and I say, luckily for us, it was literally on my way back and to from the from the hotel. So it was quite nice to pop in there, and we normally get sat in that window seat there. Um, although, again, the faux pas I did do, I say I, I got I, was, I wasn't say I was getting fed up with Liberation beer, but that's all I was drinking, and I couldn't I couldn't succumb to a, a Doom bar, and I could see one I could see a, a label on one of them. I thought, oh, I wonder what's that? What's that called? And it was something like called um, Line Cleaner. And they put it on like as a pub tam. So when the girl came across, she goes, "You have another drink?" I said, "Yeah, go on." I said, "No, oh. like I've, I've done, I've done all the liberation now." I said, "Have you cut? Have you just put a beer on there?" I said, "Is it what's that light cleaner one?" She goes, "She goes, oh no, no, it means, it means we've got ply cleaner going through the pub." I said, "Oh, I don't want a glass of that." So yeah, that was my major. So, yeah. You know, walking in there, being a bit of a beer geek and talking about beer. And then asking for a pint of line cleaner uh, didn't particularly go down very well. Uh, and the other pub that Steve sent us to as well, which is in the middle of the um, uh, uh, island, and this is St. Owen, uh, Owen, which is towards the west of the island, is the Farmers, uh, Farmers Inn, which I think, again, when people say, if people are drinking no jersey, they say, go to the lamplight and go to the Farmers Inn. So uh, this is right in the middle of the island, uh, a very old uh, inn. And again, I picked up, actually picked up this book, um, when I was in Jersey from the mar lovely indoor market there uh, about Jersey of the Ages and there's some really lovely pictures of it there as well <clears throat> and again another Sean so Steve had said if you get a chance ask the Sean so actually a very nice Northern Ireland lady was running the bar when we were there Possibly Sean wasn't there but we tried some of Sean's 60th beer so Liberation had brewed Sean 
his own personal uh, couple of barrels of beer. So we had a we had a couple of pints of that as well. So definitely worth looking out for uh, the the farmers in, which I say is, is in the middle of the. Uh, and they had a massive sitting out area as well. We actually sat inside that pub, which was quite rare in, in Jersey. Because, I mean, so. And I mentioned that on the other side of my hotel was this place called the Troubadour, which from the outside doesn't particularly look very enticing, but they're blessed by, there's a lovely square there, you can see there, and that's a, a very nice uh, pint of um, uh, Liberation Gold there. And you can see it wasn't very busy at that point, but by the time we'd kind of, I think uh, Phil came and joined me, it filled up with a lot of people, a lot of Jersey people, who worked in the in the city or in the town? Sorry, they all go there after work. So we actually checked quite a few people who were kind of just catching the bus to the bus stations just across the way there as well. So it's a really nice place. We fancy a beer. Um, it's a bit dingy and dark inside, but I say if you get on those outdoor tables, it was really really nice. And there's quite a few kind of bars around there as well. So definitely worth picking out as well. The other pub we a couple of times we use is called the Vic in the Valley. So this is right in the middle of um, uh, Jersey, literally right in the middle, and quite a large pub. Um, and again, because again of where it was, we actually managed, we sat outside on this left-hand side there, but again, some really nice beers. Again, they were only serving Liberation when I was there, but they do have a range of other beers on as well. And we only had a quick sneak inside, but it looks really nice. So probably is really good for uh, food as well. So that's another one that, again, if you're going across the island, uh, it's a good one to call in on. There's a nice car park either side of it. Um, and actually, the view across, I should have shown you, because there's a lovely, um, there's a lovely, uh, like a river uh, and a great cycle path. There's some fantastic cycle paths in Jersey. And they have kind of their version of the Boris bikes, which were very cheap uh, and it's fairly flat. So you can cycle all the way around the coast or certainly around the south coast. And similarly, there's a fantastic off road cycle path that goes up through this valley and goes up to the north of the island, which again is fantastic. So again, if you're into cycling, um, you know, although it's not a, it's not a huge um, island, uh, there is certainly some nice, nice bits to go. And then again, the other thing Steve suggested that we did was go to Lamar. Uh, and Lamar is a, a dinery, a vineyard towards the north of the island. Uh, but actually they're more famous for their cider because they were saying that actually, although grapes do okay in Jersey, actually the, the apples are fantastic. And so, They've really kind of in the last couple of years uh, put, kind of put a lot more effort into the uh, into the making their cider, and they also do one of those things where uh, if you're local, you bring in your apples from your garden, and you get and they exchange that for cider. And their branchage cider was was pretty good actually. And they've just uh, they've actually got a distillery on site now as well, and they've just been making some apple brandy, and they were just starting to mix. They're making mixing some brandy and cider together which was quite nice. And then I think they had one beer as well that they'd laid down as well. So well worth checking out. We had, we had a little tour around the vineyard. Um, uh, you get a couple of, you get some nice samples and a gin and tonic. Uh, and then we also sampled the cider. So again, well worth picking out. If you've got a couple of hours to go to La Mar Vineyard, you can get there on the bus. Fantastic bus service actually in Jersey. A bit like Isla White, like Bruce was saying, pretty cheap. It goes all across the island. Um, so, you know, we were not sure about whether you could get around, but you could and the bus stops Right outside the vineyard as well, so so pretty good. And then the last two for me are down the south of the island. Uh, these are quite near the coast, so the old port port to lay in uh, is a fantastic kind of old, typical kind of yeah, a bit like a, one of those little Cornish kind of places. That, again, you mentioned Bruce, a bit like on the Isle of Wight, so like a little smuggler's go. Uh, has a really good reputation for food, but gets really really busy because it's kind of a nice drive out of St Helier, and I guess I think a lot of locals use it as well. And then the other pub that I've used in the past quite a lot, mainly because we used to stay at the Port Alley Hotel, which unfortunately is no longer there, is the old Smugglers Inn. Uh, and this is a night, again, a lovely little pub down a very, very sleepy little little lane. Um, and in front of you there, that is St. Brillard's Bay. And the pub is right at that far corner, just there. So in fact, that me and Finn, we walked from St. Brillard, we walked all the way around there um, mm. and, and went there and actually swam back, uh, which is quite nice. So that's fun. That's the best beach, I think, on the island is St. Brillard, which is a beautiful kind of yeah. bit like a crescent shape of sand and quite protected facing southeast. Um, and I say that's the Smuggler's Inn, which is a genuine free house. It says there is just up a little kind of again, Smuggler's Cove. So again, well worth picking out. And so all these pubs are probably within 20 minutes, 30 minutes of each other as well. So uh, uh, well worth a trip to uh, to Jersey. Jersey, have got it. they have got their own little camera. Again, we talked to a couple of camera members in the actual lamplighter, and they do try and have every year uh, a, a beer festival. I think, unfortunately, they just, they just pulled the one 
or did just cancel when we were there. I think they had one coming up for the autumn term. So uh, there's not a great deal of activity on their website, etc. Um, I think that's because of kind of lockdown, but well worth just just keeping your eye out. Um, uh, and, and certainly if, if you manage to kind of combine a trip with the beer festival, which I think is either September, October, um, it's, it's apparently a really good, uh, a really good session. So well worth a little visit to uh, to Jersey. So that's been fairly sweet and, and short. Um, and these two have just sat back and drank the beers. So uh, there we go. Um, they like the news. Yeah. So I think Nick, next week, I think if we maybe just revisit your little, we mentioned last time you had you had a pretty much a twenty four hours in London, but you'd 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 gone to a couple of new booths, hadn't you? Including Gandhi, you've been to Gandalf's booths, haven't you as well? Yeah, right. So mm. if you're happy to put that together, I've got a few right. pictures that you sent me. So yeah. I think that's the plan. Uh, next time, um, I'll say we're just trying to catch up a little bit. We'll we we'll, we'll can cover that one. Um, I I put together a couple of uh, episodes on one on stone and one on Macclesfield, and if these boys are going out to Wakefield on Saturday, then I think, again, we'll, we'll need a little report back on that as well. So we've probably got the next uh, month or so's podcast sorted out, really, which is quite good. I say a bit short this week, I think we've all been pretty busy at work, and it just, I don't know, it feels, it just feels, you feel a bit kind of tired these days. I think, I think those dark nights, and um, the clocks go back next weekend, don't they? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's getting a bit grim. It's a bit it's grim out there. Tonight. Yeah, I think it's a bit like we need Bruce's crackling fires and some some nice dark stout beers, don't we, to keep us uh, keep us going, right? Just damn Facebook and smuggled a camera into some pictures. They're all closed in the villages. It's outrageous. Uh, and is any update on the um, the couple you talked about in, in York, Bruce, as well? Uh, the one by the Minster is that still completely not that, heard anything about that? that? Uh, no, that's still closed. Is the Arkham sadly? Uh, the the the, uh, the um, last drop in reopened last Friday. Uh, Black Sheep have spent quite a lot of money at it. Uh, I'm going to pop in maybe tomorrow or Wednesday lunchtime and have a look. Apparently, people say it's really good. So well, I mean, spent- what's, what's again, Bruce? I mean, the problem with the Smiths will be if he's only paying minimum wage. You know, when you've got other places paying thirteen pound an hour now. He's never going to be able to find staff, is he? No, it's going to be difficult. Um, I know it's um, a big problem, really. Some lovely, lovely pubs now just lying dormant around here, especially in the villages. You know, we're winter coming. You know, some of our favourite pubs are all closed now. And you do wonder about. I mean, I know. Well, I suppose there were reasons for the price hike, but I mean, let's be honest. The the the, the offer, if like beer offer. Well, the cast beer offer in most Smiths pubs is pretty limited, isn't it? Well, and, yeah. if, and if you now pay an extra pa- a pound. Exactly. I think you didn't mind it when it was one pound ninety a pint. You didn't really mind you drinking old brewery bitter. Um, it's, so, yeah. and I, and I've read that quite a few of the kind of you know like the old crusts of letter they've gone towards Weatherspoons or, yeah. or Green Green King pubs, or whatever. So yeah. you do wonder, you know, I guess they ticked the place over, didn't they? I mean, okay, they won't spend a lot of money, but uh, yeah. um, and then which I did notice, watch uh, which uh, one of the comedians has been having a bit of a go, haven't they? At uh, well, I said, <laughs> yeah, it's your mm. license, yeah. Did you watch well, it. I say comedian in a kind yeah, of loose was, word, really, isn't it? Really, it was very poor anyway. You know, it, it could have it could have been a lot more cutting, or it could have it could have. I don't know. It was, it was. What do they call it? Light entertainment, but it was mm. it was poor. It was. It way, you're right, yeah. And then and I even, 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 you could even tell the people in Tadcaster weren't taking him on because he he tried to set a pub up on the street opposite one of Sam Smith's pubs. And he was trying to get the attention of people walking past. They were just looking at me and say, what are you doing, you idiot? Yeah. So even, even the local folks weren't, weren't taking him on. And I did see that Brew York had put quite a lot out this week because uh, they've been involved in the uh, in doing a collab with BrewDog. Um, and they put a lot of social media out saying that I think obviously people have been upset by that because of recent shenanigans around BrewDog. Yeah. So Brew York put quite a lot of statements out saying, Really, basically saying that we are doing. We've 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 worked with the Brew Dog York crew for quite a lot. Um, it was something they'd planned to do before all this kicked off. Um, they said that they've always felt that Brew Dog York had worked very well. The people there uh, were not making the acquisitions that other Brew Dog people have said, and so they were kind of justified really why they were um, they continued with their collab and they were doing a. Uh, I think they had a, a, a brewery takeover or, or something. So I think that was quite interesting, really. It's a, bit, I don't know, it's a bit of a shame, really, that you've got to kind of justify uh, what you're doing, really. I mean, you know, Brew York are Brew York, and, you know, do they do things ethically? Well, I think they probably do, but they're certainly on, a, on an expansion um, 
push, right. aren't they? You know, they're they're not, they're very canny business men as well and women as well as uh, as well as brewing good beer. So, but I thought it was quite interesting that they they made a big play about explaining to the punters why they were doing that. Um, and I think something similar with that. Um, I know something again. You know that that, that Danish uh, uh, firm Nick that we were drinking in. Um, Uncle Tom Social, or was it Uncle Tom Social? Harry, Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. Oh, you said yeah, yeah. They've yeah. they've been putting something. They've had, I think they've had a brew dog um, issue. Basically, people saying that again, there's elements of bullying and and quite um, uh, you know not very nice management techniques being used as well. So it's it's interesting how it kind of one starts a little bit of a roll, doesn't it? And things start to come out really. But mm. I think about that, it's been fairly quiet on the old brewing scene, hasn't it? Um, I know it's the camera looking for the best beers of Britain at the moment. Um, I think one or two beer festivals are up and running again. Um, I'm not, not. Uh, I don't know. I must check with the, the Stoke ones up. But um, you went to the, the you went to the York Beer and Food Festival, didn't you, Bruce? A couple of weeks ago, is that right? Yeah, I mean there was a bit. I mean, apart from a couple of two or three bars, uh, so the Orch Pudding Brewery were there. There were the usual bottle shops. So there was nothing too outstanding beer wise in terms of any. Uh... And is York having its beer festival this year? Uh, no, no. Mixed, no. No, 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 they're having a they're having an Oktoberfest on the nose, Maya, yeah. which yeah, I right. think that's going to be pretty much carnage. I think yeah. it's one of these big um, big, big event it. operators, isn't it, bro? So they're, they're probably seeing about 10 days of, of Lagerstein's yeah. unpar music, God knows what. But I'm pound for getting a uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Going to be the weekend. But what how many people are going to go and pay 10 pounds on a Tuesday night when the weather's like this? Yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, yeah. I think you're probably right. Um, and then I think Nick uh, Moulton, they 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 put their beer town one back, didn't they? And I think I think they put it back. I think that's next. Is that next spring now? I need to check that out because I know. I think last time we were, oh, we were looking yeah. at it. No, I don't know. Uh, I know the, the the monthly food market was on, so um, the Yorkshire pudding beer were. We're on there, and I noticed they're doing. He's, he's doing five liter mini kegs of his Yorkshire pudding beer now, so that might be a a nice Christmas drink to have on the on the side. Uh, I, you know what, I, I went into Morrison's trying to get looking for a mini keg, and the Morrison's in our town have no mini kegs at all. I wonder whether that's a we're going to knock on yeah, from, uh, yeah, you know, either breweries now reverting back, or just simply can't get those because I mean those mini kegs. That's been they got absolutely uh, yeah. of, of a pandemic. They went everywhere. Um, whether, yeah, I think a lot a lot of the breweries are doing more online now anyway. I know I keep I get regular emails from Great Newsom and they they always announce which mini kegs they've got available this week sort of thing. Well, I dropped into Driffield last Saturday and it's sad to see the uh, the butcher's dog's gone. I walked all the way to the end of the ice street thinking I'll just have a yeah. cheeky pint there and uh, yeah, it's it's all closed up. So I don't know. I don't know whether they've gone completely or I don't think they moved unless they've got bigger premises, got a, a proper established pub now. But uh, yeah, that was sad because I think that was one of those first little micro pubs that opened and. Uh, my, I did say, you know, when I went in there with me old man, there was like about nine of us in there and there was only me and him drunk a pint in an hour, mm. or right, in half an hour. Everyone else was sat around nursing hours and it looked like they were in their hours and not spending any money. So you can't make a living when uh, when spots full of people not not spending money, can you really? Yeah, I must admit, we went to our, our craft bar on Friday night and it, it, it was pretty quiet. I mean, there's a big circus down at Trackman Gowns at the moment, but that was... Uh, that was fairly quiet. Um, I think my highlight of night was I had an up front, un, up front brewing Das is Techno Sex, which was a passion fruit and I think grapefruit sour. Uh, that was the highlight of the evening, which was very nice. Although we did actually, I think what we did have, we had um, we had a, because it was October 1st, we had a gold label Augustine Elder Stock, which was very nice out the fridge. And I've got to say, it was a nice bit of German beer. So, yeah, Beer Town, sorry, has been cancelled. I thought it had. It was actually due last month. And unfortunately, they pulled it and they, they're going to put it on in uh, 2022. So, I think, again, we need to get that in our diaries, gents. I think it's normally late August. Uh, it's actually around your birthdays. They normally mm. put it on. So, we'll have to uh, try and plan that as well. Okay, okay. So, let's call it a night for now. Um, and I say we'll probably try and get back together in a couple of weeks' time. So Nick's going to give us a little uh, run around um, uh, London and then hopefully we'll also maybe catch up on their little trip to um, Wakefield. And I'm off to Welsh Wales next week as well. Deepest Welsh Wales. Uh, about taking up several pints of brains, hopefully. Um, I'm going to uh, say good luck. Last time I was in Aberystwyth, with it, uh, it took me all day to find a pub. Oh, there's a nice get... weather spill in, in Aberystwyth. Well, the, and that, that was the only one we could find. <laughs> so we had to go out of town. We had to get in the car and drive out to a little village to find a pub that was doing food. 
Uh, yeah, it was surprising how few pubs there was there. To say it's, I mean, it's it, it's got a big student population because yeah. it's mu- music, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And there's there's, there's sort of all else around there. There's no other big towns or, or think, cities around there, so. It's I think, heritage, isn't it? <sighs> Yeah, I, I think with it being student places, I think mainly nighttime is when everything kicks up. I think if you go in the day, you're often struggling a little bit. No, this this was uh, nighttime. We we stopped uh, over. We, we stopped on a. It was like a big old hotel right on the front there, and I thought, oh, this is quite nice. And obviously got the pier there, but went for a walk around town. And the early two places we came across were really like slot and lamb in, uh, you know, <laughs> werewolf in, in 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 bloody London. It's like you know, you open the door and everybody stopped and looked at you. Uh, so as I say, we ended up. Going out of town into a into a little pub, which was yeah, a little bit the same. But the the, the folks in there were a bit friendlier than they were in Aberystwyth, with put it that way. Uh, <laughs> tell you right, I'm going to start playing the music, and we will. You know, I have the music ready. I've just lost it again now. So, that with me a minute. So uh, yeah, so we'll report back in a week or so's time and tell you how we have got on. Um, here's my ukulele music. So I'll play us out. I mean, it sounds like they've been not sauce. <laughs> 